This tutorial is running through how to save data to a NetCDF file with X-Array. X-Array supports saving data to a number of different formats, but this tutorial will only cover saving to NetCDF files. The most common usage pattern for saving data is one where the data is read from a NetCDF file, manipulated or analyzed in some way and then written out again. This is what is assumed for this tutorial. For more information, refer to the excellent X-Array documentation on reading and writing files. So we import X-Array and load the surface air temperature dataset that we've used previously. Just a quick recap: the dataset is surface air temperature, um, latitude, longitude, spatial domains, and a time domain. Because X-Ray saves all the metadata and coordinates in a dataset object, it's very simple to write it back out to a NetCDF file. To save a dataset to a local file, call the to, net, to underscore NetCDF method and supply a file name. And that's it. The saved file can be read back into a new variable, ds underscore local, like so. And inspection of the metadata suggests it's the same data file looks the same as above, but it's impossible to say that for certain just by inspecting the metadata. Luckily, there is an operator identical that will compare data sets and return true if they are identical. So running that shows that X-Array has saved the data set read from an opened app URL to a local file, and both ds and ds underscore local are identical, because it's true. So the identical operator is based is called from one data set compared to another data set. The same two net CDF operator will work for a data array. So this is TAS, which is a, a variable pointing to the air surface temperature data array inside the data set. And that's worked. And we can read that back in again as we did before. And you can see that it's just it's a it's a data set with just one variable, TAS, T-A-S. So using that identical, using the identical method again, so comparing TAS, which is what we saved up here, TAS local is what we read in, they're not the same. That's false. That's because this, the one that was saved, is a data set, not a data array, no longer a data array. So it's not identical. If we compare TAS, the data array, to TAS.local.TAS, which is the data array within the data set, it is, it is identical. That's true. A data array cannot be written directly to a NetCDF file. When to NetCDF is called on a data array, there is an implicit to data set operation. Then to NetCDF is, is called on the resulting data set. So the result of TAS.2 data set here, so if we make if we do that explicitly, change that into a data set, and then see if it's identical to the TAS local data set, that's true. So that shows you that it's replicating what what happened in the set in the step before saving it to a file. To save new data sets, say, after the result of calculations or some is the same process. An example from the surface air temperature data, TAS, calculate a 30 year climatology as I did in a previous uh, tutorial, and save that to the TAS underscore CLIM variable and have a look at that. That's just a data array with latitude and longitude, and the time dimension has been removed because we've taken the mean along, the, along that dimension. Now we'll save this to a file called TAS CLIM. So TASCLIM is the variable, two data set, and here we're explicitly calling two data set, and we're doing that so that we can change the name of the variable that's saved into the into the uh, NetCDF file, and then call two NetCDF after the two net two data set operation. So once again, we can read in the data that was write, written out with an open data set call, and we'll overwrite the TAS this TAS CLIM variable, there's no reason to, to not do so, and then we can 
print it out again and we can see that uh, this looks the same as above same dimensions latitude and longitude but it's a data set because we converted it into one and now the variable is called TAS underscore climatology which is what we renamed it to so that's useful because if you've changed your data so it made some calculation you may wish to change the name that you save it under inside the data set when X-Ray opens the NetCDF file, some of the metadata is saved in a special dict called encoding. And this is used when the X-Ray writes a data set back out to a NetCDF file. It encodes the data before doing so. There is an encoding attribute for a data set, and all variables and coordinates have their own encoding attribute. So this is the data set itself. It has some attributes, source file, and says what, which are the unlimited dimensions. The TAS variable has the source file as well, but it also original shape, its data type, missing value, some other information, coordinates. The encoding dict for the time coordinate is particularly interesting. Here we'll look. As this is where the calendar, proleptic Gregorian, and the units are saved from the NetCDF file. So when the NetCDF file is opened, these attributes are used to convert the time variable which is just an array of numbers, into Python date times to objects. When the data is written back to a file, this step must be done in reverse, so it has to keep a track of those, those values. NetCDF force files support lossless in-file compression. This can reduce the size of a NetCDF file considerably, but it can still be used in the same way as an uncompressed NetCDF file. So the, the, this link to the CMS wiki has more information about compressed files. Enabling in, enabling in file compression when saving data to a NetCDF file is done by adding the appropriate key value pairs to the encoding. The encoding can be updated in the object before writing to a file, or an encoding argument added to the to NetCDF method. So this is what we've shown here. So we're, we're taking our TAS variable to NetCDF specifying a file name, and then in specifying an encoding. Now, this in the encoding is actually the, the existing encoding, TAS.encoding, and then we're just updating it, doing a dict update, and adding two keys, zlib and comp level. It's sufficient just to add the zlib, ZLib key when true to get it to enable compression, but comp level allows you to specify the level of compression. By default it's 1, here we've specified 4. 4 is about as high as you'd want to go, any higher and it takes too long to compress. A directory listing shows that the compressed file... Oh, we haven't actually done it, we'll have to run it. And then do the directory listing. It shows the compressed file has been written out and that it's 111 megabytes versus the original of 199. So it's 56% the size of the uncompressed data. It's a 1.8 compression factor. 3D ocean data will typically have a compression ratio of 3 or 4. Some sparse data can be as high as 10 or 20. Reading the compressed data back shows that the compression was lossless and the data is unchanged. So here we're running tas.identical and just in line, we're just doing an open data set call and selecting out the TAS variable from our compressed data set. And you see it, res it returns true. So compressing it has, has led to no loss in data. The same encoding option works for a data set. So here we're calling it on the entire data set here. And again, if we do a listing, we can see that this is again almost half the size.